Cool. Well, let's get into our series here. I just want you to be part of something. You know what? Our daily life, I just want to really connect more with you guys. <clears throat> and so when we put these things on, just support it so that we can connect more. And so we can <coughs> do more together. Amen? So we can be church and do this together. So the Knowing Your Battle series, I'm going to talk just that series. And my series is based on the idea of do you really know what your battle is, first of all? How many feel that you often lose your battle and we, we don't make it through the battle? How many we feel that way? So I'm, I, I feel that the Lord is showing me there's battles that we are doing that is not even our battle. And so that's why we feel we lose all the time because we're constantly putting our nose in somebody else's business. We're constantly fighting somebody else's battle. We can bombard it with people's problems. And we don't have a solution because you're not listening to us and you're not even taking my advice. You just got to leave it alone because it's not your battle. You don't know your battle if you're fighting that kind of battle. You need to know your battle. You're, you're taking over stuff that is not yours. And so we feel, God, where are you? And he says, I'm not there because that's not what I want you to fight for. He says, that's why you're losing because I don't want you to win there. Because I want her to win there or him to win there. And so we get into this place of not knowing our battle. The year of victory is to know your battle. If you don't know your battle, you're really fighting useless fights. And you're, you're repeating. Like I had some fights that I did where, where there's people in my life, they just do the same thing over and over and over again. It's not worth fighting. I got to quit. It's actually in the Bible, they call them foolish people. So if you are one of those people that constantly fight the same thing over again, you're foolish. Stop it. Ooh. <laughs> God, I am that way too. I'm foolish sometimes because I fight the same fight that was not my fight. That's the series I'm going into is because I think we need to learn how to fight our battles. Our battles. Knowing our battles and knowing what to fight for. Amen? So we've got to stop being foolish. And the Bible says we call it, like it's, there's time wasters. There's, um, we have people that are um, just they will waste your time. They will eat you live, you know, and we have to un re acknowledge that, amen? amen? And so they take your anointing, they take your virtue, they take everything out of you, and then you're trying to do church, you're trying to do family, and it's not working no more. If you open yourself up to somebody else's battle, you're always going to have a battle knocking on your door that's not yours. Because they know you're available. They're know you because most people don't want to win their battles, they just want to share their battles. Come on. Come on. It's true. It's so true. We don't want, I don't want help, but I can tell you what my problem is. Come knock at Pastor George's door and, hello, Pastor, did you know this? Yeah, this is their solution. Well, did you know this? No, this is the solution. Did you, I stopped talking, here's the solution. Well, no, we don't listen. We, we let them repeat and repeat in our life. And we are fighting battles that are not even ours. Do you want to be successful today? Do you want the power of the Holy Spirit to run in your life and flow in your life like never before? Yeah. Well, we've got to start knowing our battle. Amen? Amen? And so with the first installment of that series, it's called by name. Put that title up for me. Called by name. We are called by name. We have to understand our calling. First of all, calling is an understatement. And I was listening to Stephen Furtick, my, one of my, my main pastors I listen to every week, never miss him. All of his church is just... That's what I choose to do. I get encouraged by him. Uh, I like his style. I like his clothes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I like everything about it. And some people would just absolutely not like him. But that's your problem. But, uh, but uh, when, I, when I go into this place of, 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 of calling, he, and he was sharing this, he was just saying, how many? So many Christians, and I agree with him. So many Christians are called, saying, oh, I just wish I knew my calling. You ever hear that? Come on. You probably said it yourself. I did. Oh, my God, if I knew what I was called for. <laughs> then I found out through this guy talking that we actually have more than one calling, each one of us. So there is no such thing as one calling. We're called by name. We're called for a great purpose, not just one little thing. I'm called to be a father. Like, I was, I'm called to be a dad. I'm called to be a husband. So I have more than one calling. That calling is just as important as up here, if not more important. And so we kind of look for that one calling. In the meantime, we're neglecting the very calling that we're living in. We're, 
we're, we're, because we think we need to preach, we elect our children, we, we elect our families because we think we need to preach. We think that we have to work overtime as pastors. I, I don't do that, just so you know, I am pretty lazy when it comes to evenings. I, I'm good at not doing nothing when I, my day is done. Um, but a lot of people do. They just feel that they have to, they can't say no, this is my calling, I gotta do this. But what about your other callings? And so the way you share it is that there's no such thing as one calling. We're called by name, which has many callings in it. So we have vocational callings, we have um, family calling, we have uh, God's put you in a place of marriage or a loved one or whatever it may be. And you have a different calling. You have that calling. And, and then, then he, he explains, like, first was I was a father, a, a husband. I have a calling. Whoa, wow. But now I have to give all of the rest and I have to dedicate my life to this one person. That's my calling. I have to leave all the rest of the people behind and I have to dedicate my life. Not left or left behind, but you know what I mean. Then he says, then. There was a bun in the oven. We didn't say that, but I'm calling it that. Then there is ch children. That changes a whole nother couple. So we gotta learn to be called by name more than trying to figure out what our calling is and live in our calling, amen? And so we need to walk into that today in a, in a deeper way where, where we, um, we live in, in what we are called. We are called by name. We are called to be be something great but at the same time in that greatness is many things and sometimes we, we get caught up on one thing that we can't see yet we get caught up on the vision that we had or a goal we have and we get so caught up on that we're not living for today and so if you want to know your battle you need to know who you are you need to know who you're called to be amen and so I think that's uh, a good part to start off let's just look at Isaiah 43 you can go to my Bible app uh, Daily Life Church, under my church app, I have all the notes in there. I have the scriptures that I'm using all copied in there for you. I have a place for notes underneath each scripture for you. So you can kind of just go haywire and uh, following around with anointing. Amen? Oh, man, I closed my service here. So here we go. Isaiah 43, 1 to 2. Are you ready for God to move? Are you ready to see God in this message? Well, I need your help because... You know, we're going through a DNA course, and I'm an encourager. My DNA needs some feedback. If it doesn't have feedback, then I feel like I'm doing something wrong, and then I feel guilty, and I feel shame. No, just kidding. I don't go that bad, but, um, but I could if you don't help me out. You never know. I could have a nervous breakdown if you don't help me. No, that wouldn't happen. But anyway, Isaiah 43. Come on. Help me out. Amen? Yeah, come on. If we had more people in here, I would say talk to your neighbor. If I do that, then some people feel left out because they're looking at a chair beside them. There's nobody here. If you're hearing this online, that means you should be coming here to fill these chairs. <laughs> oh, I'm being way too honest on video, am I? Oh, well, I'm always honest. I just hide something sometimes. Number four, well, Isaiah 43, one to two. But now, this says the Lord that created you, O Jacob, you and he that formed you, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Our language, everything that we're set up in, is that we're called by name. Amen? We are called by name, and Jesus is saying, you are mine. And so, we got to figure out the part of mine. What? And then verse 2, it says, when you pass through the waters, I, I will be with you. When you go through those hard times, when you go through the water, and when you're crossing that river, and you feel you can't get across, I'll be with you. Well, that could be your troubles, that could be whatever you're going through. He will be with you, amen? And well, you, They shall not overflow you, the rivers. They shall not overtake you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. Hallelujah. Neither shall the flame kindle on you. This is like the three people in the fire, it won't send you. You, we got to walk because you are called and you are mine. When I'm taking you through battle and when you are knowing your battle, I'm going to take you through stuff and, the, and you should not be burnt when I take you through the battles. When the enemy attacks and I'm going to make you and help you through it, it means you should not be burnt at the end. It means the water, you should not drown in your circumstances. Amen? Because you are mine. I called you by name. You're mine. And then so we go in this place and I said, yeah, God, yeah. Why do I get burnt then? My goodness, I do. I get burnt. 
People burn me. That's because I didn't know my battle. Because I don't know my battle. Because I'm going where Jesus says, you're mine. And I'm walking away from the mind. You know, I'm saying, Jesus says, you're mine. And we walk this way because we take a break on this and say, we should do this instead. And God is saying, no, if you walk and know your battle, there's no flames. There's no stench. There's no kennel. There's no nothing on you. There's no drowning waters over you. Now, there are. That's what panic attacks are almost like. It's like drowning water, right? Now, I'm not, acute, I'm not coming against medical conditions. I'm just saying that we have panic attacks based on our circumstances. And we get depression based on our circumstances. I am a minister of inner healing, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll promote that on my services. So you just have to put up with that. And and so when, and I'm a deliverer, bring a deliverance ministry. Huh? That's what I, that's what this ministry is founded. So you're gonna put up with that because you might be just set free today. You never know. Amen. If you want to be free, you can be free. And so when we walk in this place and saying. No more depression is going to drown me in my circumstance. No more anxiety is going to take over. Because I'm choosing not to walk in a battle that's not mine. It's like fighting against your enemy. You say, okay, enemy, I'm going to help you for a while. I'm not getting nowhere. You know, we had a good talk last night with uh, phrases. And he, he brought a point across. Stress is like elastic band. I'm, I, I, if I butcher this, I'm sorry. And I'm going to do my best. I'm going to make it my own. I'm patronizing it. It's like a plastic band, like a, you know, like a slingshot, right? So if we stress keeps pulling, there's one or two choices, either a break or for you to move forward. So what we do is we hold back on stress and our anxiety instead of moving forward into it. If we would just move into what we're dealing with, we would see the results and the remedy of it. Amen? Stress is not a bad thing. It's only a bad thing when you let it control you. Amen? So we got to walk into that place of knowing our anxieties, and we got to know when the stretch is too tight. Because when the stretch is too tight, you better call on, your, call on somebody to help you get out of that stretch because it's going to break, and you're going to have a nervous breakdown or something. It's going to break you. And so we got to walk into that place of saying, God, you are, we are called by name. <laughs> George! Yeah, God, I'm here. Yeah, you called me, right? Because we are called by name. We are called in the presence of God. We are called to be his people. But our world has created us a different battle. We are battling against things of this world that are really not our battle. We are fighting and we are battling on Instagram. We are battling on Facebook. And we are fighting for the American politicians more than we're fighting for Canada right now. We are, we are, we are typing things that don't matter. People don't care what you're saying because you don't have a say. And we're putting our battle into something that we don't have a say in. We are fighting things, not just there, but anywhere. We are putting our words in where it doesn't have no power. The only way we have power to the situation is on our knees. It's, it's the prayer time, right? It's time saying, God, I see this happening. My response is not going to happen, but your response is going to make a difference. Amen? Your response, when I go to my knees and say, God, I don't understand the thing that's happening with, with marriage, homosexuality. I'm going to say it out loud. I don't understand it all, but we are fighting against people instead of against the sin. And we are coming against, we're not, maybe not us specifically, but we are, we, are, we are slowly hating those people instead of loving the people out of it. And so God's saying, you've got to choose your battle right. You've got you to gotta choose and you've got to know your battles, amen? And when my kids were small, and um, I grew up from a Mennonite family, so you eat what's on the table. And sometimes I ate things that took me hours to eat. <laughs> Doesn't even taste good after it's cold no more. Anyway, I, I, I was forced. And I, I used to do that because I, I, I was brought up that way. So I thought, I'm going to just, you kids, you got to eat this because this is what mom made for you or dad. In those days, with mom more than dad. But this is what mom made for you. You're going to eat it. And so I changed my tune. I watched Dr. Phil. Come on. I may not always like it, but he has some good points sometimes. I, I learn from anybody that's going to give me something. And I translate it into the Word of God, and I find the answer, and I use it. And then he said there, and that was how long, years ago. He says, you've got to choose your battles with your kids. Broccoli or peanut butter honey? Broccoli, of course. No, peanut butter honey. That's not worth a battle. 
you're gonna the kids are gonna lose their energy they're gonna lose their reasoning because they're not eating they're gonna like come on and so i learned from there i said i'm not gonna fight anymore you're gonna try it at least once because we made it and if you absolutely can't e eat it then we're not gonna let you starve right so we gotta be like that with christians we don't always have to know every answer and if we don't know the answer we go and, and go with what we know do what you know so you can be successful in what you know amen I'm preaching better than your amen and so far. It, 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 could, it could change. I don't know. It could. Now, come on, church online. Say amen. So you, you probably can say it louder than these guys, maybe. Who knows? No, I'm not. I'm just teasing now. And then it goes on and says, you're mine. But I love what we're saying. If you just jump a couple of scriptures in front of 43 uh, down to verse 7, it says, even everyone that is called by name, for I have created him for my glory, I, will f I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. He's masterpiece to you, he's made you. There's a reason why you're called by name. I could call each one of your names out and I would be accurate in it because God says I called you by name. Amen? He's made you, he's made you for his glory. <laughs> He's made you and He's formed you so that you can live in His presence so you can be the family of God. Amen? Amen. Now that was supposed to be a fast little scripture to read. Um, uh, John 15 here. 15 to 17. And this is out of the EMTV Bible. English Modern Text Version Bible. And, and it's verse 15 of 15. It says, No longer do I call you servants. This is a powerful scripture. And when I was reading this, I couldn't make sense of it. Because we are, we've been always told that we are servants of God. And we still are to a point. But then I look at the difference. I just got to read the scripture because I'm preaching it before I'm reading it. Because I'm so excited that this is going to change our life today. You want to be changed today? You want it to be changed today? Okay. He says, we're no longer called to be servants. Servants is a good thing. Servants is, is to be a slave for Jesus. It's not a bad thing. It's like better than being a slave for the devil, right? Come on. Uh, it's, a, it's a man uh, of a, a condition, it's devoted to another to discuss. So it's somebody that is devoted to something even though they don't know the mind of something. I'm devoted to God. I am devoted to His presence even though I don't know exactly who He is or what He's about. Amen? So that's what a servant is. But I'm okay to be that kind of servant because I, I, my Jesus is that important to me. I'm okay to be that servant. But Jesus himself is saying, I have not, I'm not calling you servants no more. I'm okay to be your servant because God, I, know, I trust you in my mind. I just want to serve you. That's how we think. I want to serve you. But God says, no, I want you to think with a new level. Amen. So he goes on and says, don't call you servants because, uh, <coughs> sorry, because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But I've called you my friends because all things I have heard from my father I have made known to you. It's like having a close friend in your family. As a pastor, sometimes it's good to have a close friend. <laughs> and a pa where you can sit in your home and you can just say bad things and they wouldn't judge you. I don't do that though, but you could, you could almost do anything and they would be there for you, right? This is kind of friendship is that, it's like I, you're my friend because you know everything of my father. I'm get, letting you know the things of my father. I go sit in there and these people get to know everything about me. Every little nerd, they get to know me well. And that's a friendship that they, it's a whole different level of relationship, amen? But that relationship doesn't work for everybody and so a lot of Christians don't go into friends because they don't want to know everything. They, 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 because they know they're going to be more responsible. My friends have a responsibility to me when they know a lot. They have a responsibility of confidentiality. They have a responsibility of a lot of things. They have a responsibility uh, of support and honor and respect. They have, a, they have a, and I have the same responsibility to them, right? Because we, there's something about close friends that changes our life. So when we look at this close friend and he says, because my, I, I heard my father, I have made known to you. Everything I heard from my father made known to you. Jesus said, I'm being the voice for you. I'm, being, I'm letting you know what the Father thinks and how he loves you. I'm letting you I'm, that's my friendship to you. But us Christians are living servant mentalities instead of friendship mentalities. We, we get into this place because we're called by name. And when you're called by name, you're important. You're not really special. <laughs> I'm going to say this. I was sitting on a bus on my way to a conference in Toronto, you know, in Niagara Falls. And I was sitting beside this person. And he says, 
this word special is overused. Because every special, once everybody's special, it's not special no more. We outdone our specialness already. So we are just great people. We're not that special. What is special is what comes out of us through Jesus Christ. The unknown, the supernatural, the ability of God. Amen? Because that is not common. So when we want to be special, you better bring Jesus out. Amen? You better bring his anointing out. Then you're going to see some special. So I'm not going to call you special no more. I'm just going to call you great. Because I can't call everybody special because then it totally misuses the word. Because you're all the same greatness. Amen? Because we are called by name. We are called in a masterpiece. So if you want to see and you want to be noticed as special, then you better do something special through Jesus Christ. Amen? Come on. Amen. Power of God is so strong in here. Because if you would just... Look, then a friend is too. I like what a friend is. It is friendly to one. Friendly. Everybody say friendly. friendly. Yeah. Not disappointing. Friendly. Friend. Friendly. They kind of go together. Okay? If you're my friend, you better be friendly. I probably won't call you my friend very long if you're not friendly. I just won't. I'll probably say, talk to my hand. I'm going away. Friendly. It's an associate. To associate with her. The one who associates with familiarity with one, meaning that you get familiar with me. Jesus says, you, get from, you, can, you have the ability to be a friend of God. And you get to be familiar with his anointing. You get to be familiar with his love. You get to be familiar with, his, with everything he is for you. Amen? Oh, that changes my heart. I say, servant is pretty awesome. Trusting God and doing things is pretty awesome. But trusting him as a friend is a whole new level. Because I have a name that he calls me by. Amen? And it might even be a different name than your own name. Because sometimes you get a biblical name. I understand that. But... We'll stick with the simple today. And we go in this place, and it's like to have a companion, because Jesus calls us companion, not just servant somewhere. He doesn't call us a bond slave. No, even though Paul always recognized himself as a slave to Jesus, he says there, there's another level than that. Amen? That doesn't remove that, because what I found out with friendship and servants, they're very common. We both do things for each other, except now we know what we're doing it for. We, servants is, is good. Sometimes you come to this church and they don't even know us and they want to serve because that's a servant mentality, which is great. But if they're here long enough, they'll become a friend mentality. They'll do it because they connect to the vision. They, they understand my thoughts. They understand what this church is going for. All of a sudden, there's a whole new level of involvement. Amen? So we need to start as a servant because you can't become friendship until you're trusted, right? But then Jesus says, you, you, you have proved yourself to be a friend. Have you proved yourself to be a friend today? Have you proved yourself to be a friend of God? Or are you still in a servant mentality? Which is not a bad thing, but it's time to go to the next level. Amen? And a friend is like the bridegroom. It's like, you, this friend's word in Greek, friend, it's like the bride. Jesus is saying, really what he's saying here, just, and I'm going way too long on the search, I realize that, but anyway. Maybe about part two on it, who knows. But that's, I'm not, I'm calling you my bride, basically. I'm calling you one with me. Wow. And so we are called by his name, amen? Now we are still in John 15, <laughs> going on to our 16 now. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Choose means that God's choosing brings favors into you. He chose you. He separated you. This is He separated you to, from the rest of mankind. Wow. Because you said yes to Jesus, he separates you from the rest of mankind. And, and I, I, I think because we don't understand how we're called by his name, I don't think we're always seeing that part. We're not seeing us separated. We don't see us as separate from mankind. We think somehow we have to tolerate everything, and we think somehow we have to be nice, nice. And sometimes with that kind of interferes with what we do, because you can't do that because that's not nice, and you gotta tolerate that because, no, that's a bad spirit. Toleration is meant to be in love. It's not meant to be condone what people do, amen? So you tolerate the people, but you don't tolerate the sin, amen? And so there is a place of toleration. I understand that, but we tolerate everything. Instead of just the hearts of the people and love the people, we tolerate and we don't, we don't 
we don't fight against the spiritual realm of what's happening around them. And I'm trying to say it as nice as possible. It's not that I'm trying to be rude about it. And so he says, I chose you. I chose you. I separated my, uh, to be particular. People are peculiar people. <laughs> to be great people. To be above average people. Oh, people are going to hate that when I say that. I know. You know. But we are above average people because we got above average power. Amen? Without Jesus, we're just cheap. But, and we are frightened and we, we go, boo, we fall down. But with Jesus, we, we do. Have you ever not seen Jesus calls us sheep for a reason? Because people are stupid. Including me. You're only not stupid when you have the truth in you. Right? You, we, oh. we, are, we are putting ourselves as gods because we think our choices are more important than God's choices. We are, for some reason, we think we have the right to choose gender and everything else. We somehow we think we have that right. We don't. We are overruling God's authority by our own thoughts and our own desires. Huh? I love you guys. You can come in here and we'll love you and we'll never judge you. But the fact is, you're called by name. You're not called... You don't call yourself, you are called. And when you are called, life changes will happen in you. Amen? I'm going way over the place. Are you with me still? Yes. Amen? Stepping on too many toes. And he says, me, uh, you did not choose me, but I chose you and, and uh, anointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Everybody say, bear fruit. There should be evidence in your life. You should have some sort of evidence of who you are in your life. You should have some sort of evidence of your friend to God. Amen? You should have something. Come on. Something. Prove yourself unto Him. <laughs> Do not be ashamed of Him. Amen? There's a verse out there somewhere. I can't remember what it is, but it is. Do not be ashamed. Prove yourself. I can't even say it now. By the way, you know what I'm talking about. If not, then you better Google. Um, so it says, I choose to be, um, that you should be bare fruit, and your fruit shall remain. It means that everything you do through Christ Jesus, you will remain. Wow. And I was, I've been looking back all the years, because 13 years is coming up. And I look back, and I see fruit that has remained. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Wow. I don't always see it in this room, but when I look back and when I see the people that we've been through and helped and everything that's gone through, where I see them today, I say, God, you have done something. You have done something. Lord, I want to see fruit. And sometimes you don't see your fruit of yesterday, but look a little further back. Find the fruit so you can be encouraged to bring more fruit. Amen? Because we need to see that fruit. And we need to see and say, God, it's not, it wasn't a waste. This, these 13 years were not a waste. These 13 years were powerful and life-changing. Amen? I have to do that to myself. It says, bear fruit and they will remain. So that whatever you ask, the Father, in my name, it shall be given to you. The biggest problem, we don't ask in the name of Jesus. We're scared because we've got to do what Jesus does. We've got to do what would Jesus do kind of thing going on. So when we ask, we say, God, I need this. And he says, well, Jesus, dude, you didn't ask me in my name yet because that's not what I would do. Why are you asking for something I wouldn't do? Right? Sometimes we don't get things because we, we become self-centered and we forget what we're called to be. We're what kind of person we're called to be. I could be a greedy father. I could be a greedy husband. I'm not called to be that. Amen? Oh man, I can preach so many messages, so much going on in my heart right now. Because um, it's all phrases, family felt. We got my stuff opened up and yesterday we talked away. We had a, like I did a whole service in my household yesterday. It's just like, come on. Got me excited. And these things I command you were 17, that you may love one another. Why would he put that right there? You know, come on. First of all, he talks about all these things. He talks about how he chose me and all that. And, oh, God, I thought it was me and you. Ooh, it was so good because you chose me. Ah, yeah, yeah. I got it. You know, it's like, wow. Ooh. And then he says, love one another. That kind of ruins this. 
I'm going to go. Come on, God. We had a thing going. I got to love you. You got to love me. Love one another. He puts that in there. Everywhere you look, it's always with one another. Everywhere you look. Everywhere. And people say, that's not about church. I'm like, come on. What? How much more do you need? You know, I, I'm just going to go ramble today because that's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this all. You know, we're talking about church. And a couple of months ago, I visited somebody. This, and they, oh, my goodness. 35 minutes is up. Hey, yeah, yeah. We need to hear a little bit more. Because that's what we're doing today. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Yeah, come on. And um, a couple of months ago, I was sharing with somebody, and it was maybe a year, a couple years ago, it just feels like a month ago. But anyway, I was sharing our new name, Daily Life Church. This guy goes and says, You know, I think too many churches are using the word church. I used to think the same thing. I said, I'm not going to have the word church because everybody's offended by church. But these days, there people get offended by marriage. Never mind church, right? Because it's the constitution of God. It's like Jesus said, I'm making that you male and female in the image of myself. I'm making that. <laughs> There's a whole other uh, relationship series I'm working on right now. But anyway, uh, so it's like saying to this, to my wife saying, hey, lady, we, we, we're not using the word marriage. We are, we have an experience together. That's how we use the word church, worship experience. We have a kind of experience. I don't even know how to call it. But we can't use the word That's kind of like taking the word church out of it. Whoa, we're not really married. Ten years together, we have a great experience together. The kids, you're right to walk out any time. But when you call yourself church, you become family. When I call myself marriage, I make a commitment. Amen. When I say church, and, I, and these people that got committed, when we say church, we get committed. Amen. So the thing is, yeah, it's not always positive, but then since when has everything ever been positive? There's marriages that break, there's churches that break, but it doesn't make it wrong. It's still a covenant of God, amen? And so we got to look at it and say, huh, you know, to love one another is very important, but to recognize why we're loving one another, amen? It's because we are called upon this rock, the church will be built. We are called to be together. That's why we're together. We're called to make changes together. We're called to make a difference together, amen? And so, yes, yeah, some people say, well, church is really just the body of Christ. Well, yeah. Want a quick rattle of everything? Here's a quick rattle. The church is the skin of the body. Without the skin of the body, the element, the, the ligaments can't be connected. So the church is the skin of the body. The fivefold ministry is the heart, because without leadership, there's no flow in the presence of God. There's no vision, there's nothing that could flow. So all together we have the full body because Jesus is the head. The fivefold ministry is the heart that functions and pumps and gets your body excited to do what you're called to do. And the church is the skin, so you can actually stay attached to the body. <laughs> Woo! All right. It's almost a wrap. I thought, like, someday I'll do that. <laughs> Did you ever see it that way? That's what it is. Without church, you don't have skin. Come on. You don't have no cartilages or nothing. You are just living away. So we need to be together. Oh, that was my pet peeve there or something. Here you go, Philippians. <laughs> I told you, God is just working with me. I'm just going to be blunt and bold, and we're just going to say it the way it is because God is moving, and I'm not going to stop him from moving. Amen? Amen. We're going to redeem church back. We're going to redeem marriage back. We're going to redeem God's kingdom back, and we're going to live it. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we're not going to hold it back no more. We're going to see the presence of God again. We're going to see the anointing again. We're going to see deliverance again. We're going to see miracles again. We're going to see healings like never before again. Amen? Amen. We're going to see the love of God. We're going to see people come because they get loved, not because they get judged. Amen? Yeah. yeah. Philippians 3, 13, 14. Brothers, I do not count myself to have laid a hold or obtained everything. But in one thing I do, forgetting these things which are behind me. Ever say, forgetting things behind me. Come on, forgetting things behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. We are too busy reaching going, where was that? Where was that? Where was that? Ah. Oh, yeah, I had that praise moment right there. God says, where's your praise moment? Come on. We're too busy looking through our chest, looking behind us saying, God, where? I remember you were here somewhere. I, 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 somewhere here. Yeah, oh, where? Oh, no. No, I'm not there no more. It's behind. I'm forward now. 
Amen. The only thing that's shining behind you is the glory of God. The, the promises and the victories. That's what's shining in you. But I'm right here in front of you. Amen. So it goes on and says, well, obtain all things. And then we need for This is Paul talking. I, in verse 14, I will press forward the goal for the prize. I will press forward. Everybody say press. Yes. yes, that's a fall after. That's uh, taking persecution. That's doing whatever it takes. I'm trying to rush because I want to get it done. But <laughs> it's good. Amen. It says, I, I, I press forward. That means to suffer persecution. That means whatever it takes, I'm moving forward. Amen? And sometimes we are too busy not moving forward because we choose not to press forward. Press forward. The goal for the prize. Everybody say prize. prize. The prize is the heavenly reward of the Christian character. It means your character gets rewarded. Because you're called by name. It means you've got a character. Find your character, you'll get rewarded well. Because when you live in your character... You will have stress-free life. Well, not stress-free, but you'll know how to deal with stress. He says, where was I? There we, there we go. The prize of the high calling. Everybody say high. 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 high calling. It's a divine invitation to embrace salvation of God. Salvation is, uh, salvation is healing, deliverance, freedom. It's a wholeness of who you are in Christ Jesus. We have to reach the prize. If you haven't reached the wholeness of salvation, you say, oh, I've been born again, I've been saved. That's not what I'm talking about. Salvation is when you are made whole, is when you live whole, when you live with the perfection of Jesus Christ in you and say, I am made whole because of him. He's done it all for me. Amen? When you live that way, then you truly reach the prize. When you understand that even though I have crackling knees, I'm made whole. Even though if I have a headache, I'm made whole. If you understand that, that's not going to stop me. I am made whole in Christ Jesus. That's what truly is going to move you forward. Amen? Amen. And I call it to embrace God. And of the God in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Everybody say in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I'm not quite because I just go move on. It really so good. I'm going somewhere with this. I was going somewhere with this. <laughs> I don't know if I can go further because it was all good to go. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Anybody, anybody take five? Five. <laughs> five minutes, okay. Because like I said, I came here as a different person than today. Everything was going wrong and maybe still is. I have no idea and I don't care right now. Don't tell me if it is. But I feel God is wants to move. He wants to set us forward. He wants you to know your battle. He wants you to know how to fight your battle, not somebody else's. Amen? Sometimes your battle is somebody else's, but you need to know your battle. How do you know if it's not your battle? If it's a repeating thing that is not working. It means that you should hand them down and say, hey, go talk to somebody like this. Or you need to stop trying to fix something that you don't know how to fix. You can get somebody that knows how to fix it. Amen? For 2 Thessalonians 2.13. But we are obligated to give thanks to God always. Everybody say, we are obligated. People don't even know that, but we are obligated to give thanks. We are, it's not even a maybe. It's not just if you feel like it or if you feel so good. If you feel good today, thank God. If you feel bad today, don't thank Him. It's not, you're obligated. It's an obligation you have. It's because He created you. He's called you by name. You have an obligation. Amen? Amen. Obligation. You're obligated to give thanks to God always for you, brothers, beloved, or sisters. Uh, beloved by the Lord because God chose you from the beginning for salvation he's, for, he's chose you for the wholeness so people can see wholeness he's chose you for the fullness and the biggestness of God so that everybody can see the bigness of God he's, he's called you to be above average so people see what it looks like to be above average he's called you to be above reproach so it looks like what is above reproach he's called you to shine salvation loosen the tongue a little bit let's go of salvation through sanctification of the spirit to believe in the truth. Amen? To which we are he's called you through the gospel. Everybody say through the gospel. He's called you through here. So if you want to know what you're called to, start reading this, you'll find some callings in there. It will hit your heart because it's alive. It's going, wow, this is me. I need to do this. And you will whoa, whoa. it will be powerful. Amen. <laughs> this is me trying to get it done. Because I think there's the last part I really want to share on, but it needs to have this to get it in there. To which we are called, you are through the gospel for the obtaining of the glory of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. You are called so that you can obtain the glory. So you want to know what you're called for? You're called to carry the glory of God. You want to know what your calling is? It's called carrying salvation. 
is carrying salvation for another person, for yourself, and it's for your kids. You're carrying the salvation. You're carrying hope for freedom. You're carrying hope for healing. You're carrying hope for deliverance. You're from danger of destruction. You, people around you, they should feel safe. Because that's what it means to be safe from destruction. That's what you carry. If you don't carry that, if you carry destruction, you need to be saved today. Maybe you've been saved, but you need to say, Jesus, I need to come back to you so that I am safe around people. So they can feel safe around me, so that people can grow. Amen? Yes, I'm almost done. I promise. Kind of. This is how we do it in Romans chapter 8. It talks about how the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. And it goes on and says, the Spirit searches our hearts. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to talk a little bit about it. But searches our hearts. And in and, and verse 28, it says, of, um, it was uh, Romans 8. In verse 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to purpose. We are called into purpose. So we need to know more about purpose than we need to know about calling. So when you do purpose, you'll feel calling. You'll see calling. Amen? Purpose is salvation. Purpose is healing. Purpose is doing, being the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. So we are called. We're invited to this. So let's just call the team up to sing the closing song. And um, we're going to close her off here. But the biggest part of my message today is you're called by name. You are set in place to know your battles. When you're called, it's like the father and friend. They will tell you the deep things of God. And when you know the deep things, you know what to fight for and what not to fight for. Amen? And how do you do that? Is that you call upon the Spirit. Because He knows your weaknesses. He knows how to lead you. He knows where to take you. Because He knows what you're called for. And if you read that scripture more, it says like, He reads the mind of your heart. He sees the mind of your heart. Most of us say, I don't want the Holy Spirit because He can see things that I don't want Him to see. But... He reads. When I read this yesterday, it reminded me, he said, I really can't hide nothing no more. Everything I'm going through, because I have the Spirit lives in me, I accept the Spirit in me, I'm a fulfilled Holy Ghoster. You know, and, uh, and here I'm trying to get away with things when the Spirit knows my heart. Here we're trying to get away with things, and He can read your mind. He can see your mind. And Jesus is saying, you need to get back into the Spirit of God like never before. You need to rise up again. Amen? You need to rise up and say, stop trying to hide from God because you're not hiding. He's seeing all things. You're not really hiding your addictions, everything you're going through, your pains, your depression, and you're trying to hide it from the people, but you're not hiding it. He sees your heart. If you just let the Spirit lead you, He's going to lead you to the right places. He's going to set you free like never before. You're going to see the power of God, and you're going to see the healing that you so desire to have if you just open your heart and say, here I am, God, because he already sees it. He just wants you to say, come, and he wants to come. He wants to come, and he wants to use his authority because you are his friend. You are his friend, and he wants to take care of his friends, and he wants to heal you today. I'm, I, I'm going to waste your time. I don't really care. Stand up. Let's stand up together. Let's receive together. Let's receive together. Let's receive together because I know, and in spite of how many people would want to admit it, we all need this right now. We all need this right now because we all have dripped off God and we, we've been, been burnt out because we've been serving God. But he says, I want you to be my friend today. I want you to see the healing that I have for you. I have the spirit within you and he can read your heart. He can read your mind at any time. Then he says, start groaning in the spirit because he knows how to fight for you. And that's what that scripture says. And God said, today I want to fight for you. Today the Spirit of God wants to fight for you. He wants to fight for you. It's time to be done with depression. It's time to be done with anxieties. It's time to be done with lost hope. It's time to be done with low self-esteem. It's time to be done. And God is calling on you today. And He's saying, I'm here for you today. I'm your friend for you today. If you would just listen, I already know what you need. Just raise your hands right now. Raise your hands and say, God, I want to be set free. I want to be set free indeed in Jesus' mighty name. And Jesus is saying, be free indeed. In your obedience, I see. I see you reaching out to me right now. I see you. You want my healing right now. And I am here for you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. As you sing this song, we are conquerors, if you can do that. 
Let's rise up again and be conquerors for God again. Amen? In the name of Jesus, receive the healing as we sing this song. And I'll come and close.